Today we're going to do something a little bit different. So we're going to discuss the life of Raghunath Das Goswami, but I want to do it by asking you what you know of his life and then discussing that. So we'll do it in a more interactive way. So for example, what do you know about the early life of Raghunath Das Goswami? Who is his father? Uh, Hiran, uh, yeah. Govardhan. Yeah, Govardhan, Majumadar, and his Hiranya. uncle is Hiranya. Hiranya. They're called, they generally call them Hiranya Govardhan, oh, Hiranya but they're brothers. Okay, and um, so he was born there. From his childhood, many Vaishnavas would come to where he lived. Saptagram, yeah, Adi Saptagram. Adi Saptagram. Good, Adi Saptagram. Um, his family was very wealthy because they were collecting tax on behalf of the Muslim rulers, so they were very wealthy. Sometimes they got in trouble because they didn't give the proper tax, or you know, they kept more than their share. And Raghunath was very expert at dealing with everyone, so he pacified the Muslim Qazis and Chand, the rulers, so he didn't get his parents and uncle killed. <laughs> Otherwise, they were very strict. They wanted, because if you like embezzle that much money, it was a lot of money, a lot of money. I don't remember the exact amount, but it was a lot of money. So they were like threatening to kill them, but he pacified the situation. He was very sweet with them. He said, you are like my father also, you know. And we are just young and sometimes we make mistakes, but anyhow, he said, we'll quickly get it back and you please forgive us. So, because he was very sweet in his dealings and also he has, he's a bridge basi, so bridge basis are naturally very charming and sweet. So he pacified the situation. So, from his childhood it said, many Vaishnavas would visit that place. People have different ideas, oh, they would visit because, oh, they're wealthy grahastas and so, they will give some d donation to the renunciants who come, the sannyasis who come. But <clears throat> so, yeah, sadhus don't go. We learned this verse. Sadhus don't travel house to house in order to get wealth from people. Remember this verse we learned, uh, Vaishnav Tattva? We can say it. Mahad vichalanam nrinam grihinam dina chetasam nishreyasaya bhagavan kalpate nanyata kvachit. That they travel only to help the lost conditioned souls. Nanda Maharaj said this to Gardaga Muni when he came to give the name ceremony to Krishna. So they only travel to help everyone. So generally they go to ordinary houses like that. They go house to house to help everyone. But in the case of Govardhan, Ajumadar, they came actually because they were eager for darshan of Raghunath. Because wherever a Mahabhagavat Vaishnava is born, it will be like honey that many bees are attracted to come and taste. This is the nature of the Mahabhagavats. And he's not also he's not an ordinary Mahabhagavat, he is none other than Prati Manjari. So he's very special. So especially it said Haridas Thakur loved to come and have his association. And he also from childhood had this chance to be in Sadhu Sangha. From childhood, he would always stay in Sadhu Sangha, hear Hari Gita, be absorbed in Kirtan. We also see this in lives of devotees, that from childhood, they'll be inclined towards Bhakti, not so inclined to frivolous childhood play. Like Prahlad also showed that, when the boys asked him to play, he wasn't interested. He said, instead, we should do Kirtan. Jeev Goswami also, from his childhood, he worshipped Krishna in the deity form, and also played with Krishna, so Raghunath Daskar Swami, from childhood, he was only interested in bhakti. 
So Haridas would come, other Vaishnavas would come, and they would spend a lot of time in Darshan. So that's one of the main events of his childhood. So then when he was growing up, Mahaprabhu's Leela was starting in the sense that he was starting to reveal himself. And soon after he took sannyas, Mahaprabhu took sannyas and went to Puri. So Raghunath also wanted to go and be with Mahaprabhu. It's like if there's a pure devotee traveling, if there's devotees with greed for Sadhu Sangha, they want to be wherever that devotee is. They're not interested in staying at home. So Raghunath was not at all interested in staying at home. He wanted to go and be with Mahaprabhu. Because Mahaprabhu also there's a spiritual connection because Mahaprabhu is Krishna with Radhika's mood and complexion and Raghunath is Rati. So his internal spiritual longing manifests externally in him as well. So his desire to be with Mahaprabhu was very intense even when he was young. And as he became like an adolescent, this desire increased more and more. And he was always thinking, how can I be in the association of Mahaprabhu? But on the other hand, we see just like in Braj, the gopis, they always want to be with Krishna, but the family sometimes hold the, holds them back. And this is to enhance the Leela, to make it more sweet. And also to, in this world, when these things happen, it shows the glories of the devotees. If there's any obstacle holding you back, the devotees will cross over everything just to serve Krishna, to meet with Krishna. So it enhances their glory. So Raghunath had a burning desire to be with Mahaprabhu. But his family, when he was just a young, like adolescent, then they quickly got him married because they already saw the signs of his renunciation. It said that you can see from childhood a person's inclinations. So they saw that he had some inclination towards... It said that what is... The, uh, how do you know if one is qualified to leave family life? Tavat karmani kurvita that if someone has developed faith and detachment and greed for hearing Harikata, then they are qualified to give up karma. Dhavat karmani kurvita. Otherwise, they may come to Sadhu Sangha, but if they don't have taste for Harikata, again they'll start engaging in karma. And then they'll end up doing sinful activities on the strength of the name and only engaging in business activities instead of just being attached to Harikata. So it said, Raghunath. He had so much greed and attachment to always be in Sadhu Sangha and hearing Harikata from his childhood. So his parents thought, oh, he may become like a renunciant, and they were worried. He's not interested in the family affairs and business. So what he started, he started trying to escape, actually. And his parents, see, this is out of so-called material love. They think, oh, we love our son so much, but they wanted to control only. And they didn't want to let him do as he desired. They were only trying to control. So whenever he would try to escape, they would send people out from their household guard. Because they were so wealthy, they had many guards and many servants, many lookouts. So they would always find him and capture him and bring him back. And so it was like, sometimes kids, they like to run away from home when they're young. Ordinary kids also will sometimes run away from home. But generally they'll come back themselves or they will be found and brought back. But Raghunath wasn't <laughs> looking to come back. He wasn't so happy, to, eager to come back. So he kept going. Then they arranged his marriage. Gurudev said they arranged his marriage with Miss Universe. <laughs> they found the most beautiful girl in India and they got them married. Gurudev said Bas, he got married with Miss Universe because they were very wealthy also. So they, you know, they could find the most attractive girl and they got married like that. But he was not at all interested. Why? Because he has no Purush Bhav. So how will we try to enjoy another Shakti? It's not possible. He himself is identifying as Shakti in the service of Krishna. So there's no mundane lust. So if you see anyone, it said, if you see anyone who is beautiful, you can appreciate, but you have no desire to enjoy. Like It's not like if you see a beautiful flower or rainbow or anything beautiful in this world, you can think, wow, this is so wonderful, let it be engaged in Krishna's service. So it's not like there's, rag and dvesh means attraction and aversion. This is rag and dvesh, and both come from calm. 
in this world. Raga means I'm attracted to enjoy this thing. And Dvesh means, oh, I'm like pulling away from it. I'm trying to restrict myself from it. It's both some kind of uh, churning in the heart of some anartas. If we are Nidapeksha, Sadhu, then we are not disturbed by anything. And we can also appreciate. And then we think, oh, this is very nice and it can be engaged in Krishna's service, but there will be no calm vasana, no desire to enjoy that. Gurudev said, when you see any beautiful person, you should think, oh, they are like the Saki of Krishna, the Saka of Krishna. Bas done. But you have no desire to try to enjoy or dominate. So Raghunath, he was not at all disturbed. Okay, no problem, Miss Universe is my wife. She is also Krishna's Saki. <laughs> he internally is identifying with his own spiritual nature, not his external manifestation. Even though it's said that Gurudev says in his commentary, in this new edition we're publishing, Gurudev says that Raghunath, Yoga Maya covers over the Nitya Siddha's knowledge of that they are eternal associate of Krishna. That Raghunath is a Nitya Siddha, it means he's an eternal associate of Radha Krishna. And he came into this pastime as a sadhaka. But Yoga Maya, she covers over the Nitya Siddha's knowledge of being a Mahabhaga, uh, an eternal associate of Radha Krishna. And then they think, I'm just a practitioner, I'm just a sadhaka. So he was feeling this mood that I am a sadhaka, actually. He was not thinking, I am Radharani's and Krishna's Manjari. Sometimes, like Krishna, also his Aishwarya is covered in Braj. But sometimes something is revealed, like when he opens his mouth and all the universes are seen. But still, Yashoda sees that and she thinks, oh, some spirit has captured him. She doesn't think he is God. So sometimes the Nitya Siddhas will get some revelation internally, some spurti, some glimpse of their seva there. But most of the time, they're not thinking that I am a Nitya Siddha. I am an eternal associate. So Raghunath was in this mood of a sadhaka. But still, as a sadhaka, he has no material lust or these ordinary anartas that we have. Calm, growth, low, mud. He doesn't have lust, anger, greed, madness, illusion like we have as conditioned souls. <clears throat> so then, even after he was married, he kept trying to escape. <laughs> so then his mother suggested to the father that we should serve him very nicely, feed him very nicely, but we should keep him under constant watch. They were keeping him under constant watch, but she said we should also like, keep him locked up in a room or in the house lock the doors, or if we have to, we can, at night, we can tie him. <laughs> you know, like in prison, you can put a chain on your ankle and tie it to the bed. So he's in a golden bed, but still shackled. This is called, in material life, we have three kinds of shackles that are binding us. Shackles of iron, shackles of silver, and shackles of gold. So it said this is called Tamagun, Rajagun, and Sattvagun. Sattvagun is like a golden shackle. And it says sometimes the golden shackle is more dangerous because then we become attached to the gold, like gold rings, gold chains. We don't realize these are like shackles binding us to this world. Our attachments to these gold things, they're binding us here and keeping us distant from our true nature and our true purpose and service of Krishna and relation with Krishna. So they, and if you're in a tamat or if you have bad karma, then you're in iron shackles means you're always kind of suffering and miserable. And sometimes that's more conducive to developing detachment and attraction towards Krishna. Because if you're suffering in this world, then it's said in the Bhagavatam, Tvam akinshana gocharam. Krishna is easily attainable by those who are akinshan, free of material possessions and the, the, the distressed, the wretched. It said, Jan Maishwarya Shruta Shribir Edamana Madapuman Naivar Hatya Bidatam Vai Tvam akinshana gocharam. Krishna is akinshana gocharam. Easily attainable for those who are destitute and those who have high birth, opulence, beauty, wealth, good education, it's more difficult for them to approach Krishna because those are like golden shackles that are binding them more strongly. So the mother said, oh, we should bind him even though he was surrounded by such opulence. He was in a palace. He was like a prince. But still that could not bind him. So then the father said to the mother that already we've given him in marriage to Miss Universe and if the bondage of that beauty in it cannot bind him then what else can bind him in this world? You may, how long will you keep him chained up? You cannot chain him up his whole life otherwise people say he's like a mad person. Ultimately in family life they want you to join a regular society. They want you to be a member of society, to be working, to have kids. 
And if you're always chained up to the bed, you know, what are your kids going to think? <laughs> you know, my father is a mad Pagal person. They always have to keep him chained up. He's always trying to run away from home. So they want him to join society to get married, have kids, have a job, spend time with the children, enjoy in this world, have fun, you know, go to the theater. But if he's always like looking for a chance to escape, then how's it going to be good for... It's not going to... The, the family life won't work. So the father said, this is... I don't know what to do. Already, we've given him marriage to Miss Universe. Krishna says in the Gita that Yopayati Shaner, uh, in the Bhagavatam, Yopayati Shaner Maya, Yoshid Deva Vinirmitam, Tomik Shitatvanam Rityum Drina Kupami Bhavritam. That attraction to beautiful, like man or woman, is like a grass covered well. And especially the form of a beautiful woman, Krishna said, this is the form of Maya meant to bind the conditioned soul. And this is made from Krishna himself. Yoshit Deva Vinirmitam. Krishna manifests as Yoshit, as attractive man, attractive woman. And then this is like a grass covered well. And that grass covered well means family life, the dark well of family life. And it looks very nice externally. And then you walk upon the grass covered well. And then you fall down inside and you become trapped in the dark and blind well. So that was the situation so he wanted to leave it and so the father said what's the point we cannot better we keep him under constant guard and surveillance and whenever he tries to escape we bring him back but there's no need to actually bind him up it'll only cause more disturbance to him it'll increase his desire to leave sometimes family people they overextend when you when someone wants to leave then they cause too much restriction and then children want to rebel even more if you don't give a little bit of freedom, then they'll rebel against you completely. Same in governments. If there's a like imperialist government ruling over another nation and they're too forcefully controlling, then the people will rebel. But if they're giving some laxity, if they're being a little bit relaxed and giving them nice you know, food and maintenance and whatever they want, then people won't rebel so easily. So anyhow, Raghunath sometimes would go and see Mahaprabhu when Mahaprabhu is in his... Lila is Goranga. So, also his parents were Vaishnavas. We shouldn't think they weren't Vaishnavas. But it said that Mahabharu said they are Vaishnav Prai. Vaishnav Prai means externally they are Vaishnavas. And truly they are Vaishnavas. But Prai means almost Vaishnavas. Because real Vaishnav, they are only attached to Krishna and Krishna Bhakti. But it said, Mahabharu said that they are serving the devotees, they give great donations to the devotees, they arrange programs, they serve the Vaishnavas, but they want to get material benefit from it. They want to have a nice material society, uh, family life. They're not just thinking, how can I go to Krishna and serve Krishna and be in Braj? They're materially attached still. So they're like Vaishnav Prai. He said, some people externally may appear like enjoyers, but internally they are the topmost Vaishnavas. And some people externally appear like renunciants, but internally they are great enjoyers. So externally they are great Vaishnavas serving everyone, but really they still had this material desire in them. So one time when Raghunath went to Mahaprabhu, whenever he would go, he would be under guard also. They would send five, six, seven servants. So when he went to Mahaprabhu, he revealed his heart that he wanted to leave and come to Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu at that time said, Markad Han, Loka Nadekaya, Yatayukta Bog, Vishaya Bunjiya, Anashakta Han, that you should not become like Markat Vairagya, monkey renunciation. He said, now you are young, sometimes people try to leave everything and come to the temple and live in Sadhu Sangha, but they're not ready yet, they're not mature enough yet. And so then again they make sangsar in the temple life. And so this is called monkey renunciation. Kakana bogera, kakana tegera. Sometime enjoying, sometimes renouncing, then back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Ganatadala. Very fickle. <laughs> He said, you should not do this and you should hide your internal bhajan, hide your mood and let it ripen, let it mature. And in due course of time, Krishna will uplift you. He said, you should be patient. He said, go back home, don't become like a mad person. Mahaprabhu said, batul. Batul means like a mad person. He said, now be peaceful, go home. And he said, externally, you should show loka vyavahar. Externally act with everyone so that they're not displeased with you and don't reveal so much your inner bhajan and bhav. Keep it hidden and let it mature. So he said, okay, so he went home. And he stayed for some time like that. And then after that meeting with Mahaprabhu, his family became very happy because he started spending time with the family, talking, hanging out, also like 
speaking with his wife and being nice before he's just like completely like money you know silent and only doing bhajan now they're a bit happy or oh, thinking okay Mahaprabhu is good he told him to stay in his family like they didn't know exactly what Mahaprabhu said but they saw that after he came from Mahaprabhu's association now he was speaking with everyone spending time and everyone was very happy so then some more time passed like that ultimately God's arrangement is the good arrangement as Prabhupada likes to say you know so Mahaprabhu instructed him like this and it arranged that his restriction was a little bit relaxed and he was able to continue his bhajan and wait for the proper time. We also see that Mahaprabhu doesn't like... Everyone has an individual case. So we should take shelter of Guru Vaishnavas. If we want to surrender to Guru Vaishnavas, we have to approach them and get their blessings for whatever we want to do. Sometimes it's not right to leave family. They know if we're qualified or not. Many people came to Jagannath as Babaji Maharaj and wanted to live as Babaji's. And then when he told them to do seva, then they got upset. When he told them to take care of the garden, they got upset. I think you know this story maybe. So then Bhaktivinoda Thakur later came and he told some of them, they asked him what to do and he told some you should go home, some you should, if you want to stay you do seva, some you can do this, do that. So it's an individual case. When Mahaprabhu went to South India and he stayed at the home of Gop, uh, Prabhunanda Sarasvati Pat and the parents of Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Venkat Bhatta, um, Gopal Bhatta wanted to come with Mahaprabhu. He was also a young boy and every day he was serving Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu said, now stay at home, serve your parents, and when they leave or when the time is ripe, then you can come to me. So Mahaprabhu also told him, even though he is Goswami, he told him, now stay at home. So then what happened? You guys, we know what happened next, right? Raghunath. After some time, Nityananda Prabhu started preaching. Mahaprabhu took sannyas. He went to Jagannath Puri. And Nityananda went with him, but soon after that, Mahaprabhu told Nityananda that you should go everywhere and spread Sankirtan, do the Sankirtan movement, spread the Sankirtan movement. So Nityananda began doing Sankirtan everywhere with all his associates. And it said Nityananda was so absorbed in ecstasy that they would go backward, one, 10 miles one direction doing Sankirtan and then 10 miles back and doing Sankirtan. Like we do arti in the temple room, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. People, why are you just going back and forth, back and forth, you know? 50 feet back, 50 feet forward, like Pagal people, you know. <laughs> but Nityananda was doing, except he was going 10 miles one way, then 10 miles back. And so he was going from Puri to Bengal, many hundreds of kilometers. But th it was taking months because they were uh, mad in the absorption of Nam Sankirtan. Sometimes they would climb on trees and dance in the trees. <laughs> Sometimes they would dance in the rivers, on tops of houses. Sometimes people say Sankirtan should be more mellow you know sankirtan doesn't mean like very exuberant you should peacefully do sankirtan why are you like running around like crazy people but if this like spirit of sankirtan catches you <laughs> then no longer will you be in control of yourself but anyhow we should remain tempered to some degree so Nityananda was like that with all his associates they were doing completely absorbed in sankirtan and the ecstasy of sankirtan ras and they were doing Sankirtan all over the countryside. And everyone who would see them would also become absorbed in that current of Sankirtan. So anyhow, in due course, he came to Panihati. And in Panihati, in Panihati, uh, he was doing a festival, like a Kirtan festival, for a couple of days. And they would go to take prasad at Raghava Pandit's house. Raghava Pandit was a very excellent cook. It said that when his wife would cook, Radharani herself would come and she would cook. And they would cook under Radharani's guidance. He said whenever they would cook, it would be like the most amazing prasadam imaginable. And actually Radharani herself was cooking. So when Nityananda was there, then Raghunath heard because Adi Saptagram is not so far. So then he asked his parents permission to go and see Nityananda. And the parents at that time were happy with him because he was being a good boy. <laughs> so they said, okay. And they sent, you said, if you're going to see the Vaishnav, you shouldn't go empty handed. So they gave him the guards to carry a lot of wealth with, and they say, go, you should serve. So then when he went to Panihati, he offered pranam to Nityananda from a distance. It was in the morning time, like 8, 8.30, 9, and they were doing kirtan. And after that, Mahap Nityananda was sitting on top of like a raised platform around a tree with a few of his associates, and everyone else was sitting below and doing sankirtan. And then Harigata, the whole program. So Raghunath paid pranam from a distance, and then... Someone told Nityananda, oh look, there is Raghunath at a distance. And then Nityananda called out, oh, chore, thief. Oh, thief. For so long you've been hiding from us and now you're still trying to hide. Come forward. 
So then very humbly, he came forward because they don't like, Vaishnavas don't like to push themselves forward. So he was offering pranam from behind and waiting for a chance for darshan. When we go for darshan of Vaishnavas also, it's not good that we like push everyone aside and run up in front and then I'm the most important person here and now I'm going to ask you questions. So he was very humble from the behind. He offered pranam and then Nityananda very kind, like with love, he was saying chore, you know. You can say one thing in many ways. You know, if he's, hey, chore, badmash, pakarlo, you know, grab him, put him in prison, you know. But if you're saying, oh, you are such a, you're a thief, you know, you can tell if someone's saying it with love or not. So he was saying it with love. And when Raghunath came forward, then he put him down and he placed his two feet on his head. When he offered pranam before Nityananda, then Nityananda placed his two feet on Raghunath's head. So this is Guru Charana Padma. When we get the lotus feet of Guru on our head, then Kevala Bhakti Sadma. This is the only way we can get Bhakti. So Nityananda, being Akanda Guru Tattva, original Guru, he gave this mercy to Raghunath and then at that time he said that all any obstacles to the attainments of his spiritual desires were removed. If we get the mercy of Guru, he said Mahat Kripa Vina Kona Kariya Siddhinai, without the mercy of the Mahat, the great Mahabhagavad or the great soul, we cannot achieve any thing we desire, any perfection, any activity. Kona Kariya Siddhinai, no activity will be accomplished. So therefore when Nityananda gave him his mercy, all obstacles to his desire were removed. And then Nityananda said, now, oh, you have been hiding for a long time. Now I want you to distribute prasad to everyone. So there were like thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people with Mahaprabhu and Nityananda. Like when we see Navadri Parikrama or Rathiyatra, so many, so many people. So with Nityananda it was like that. So many people were with him. So then as soon as he got this instruction to serve, immediately, because he had the wealth, he had the facility, but ultimately he is Rati Manjari, so he's able to manifest everything very quickly and expertly because the Manjaris and the Gopis are always serving in Krishna Leela for millions of Sakas and all the Prithvasis and they can quickly prepare everything. So Nityananda was saying, feeling like now it is Pulin Bojan. Baladev and Krishna are taking breakfast on the bank of the Jamuna. They were sitting by the bank of a river also. So he said, now prepare Pulin Bojan. So we've heard this story. We'll just quickly discuss it. They went to all the different markets in all different directions because there's so many people where, how will they feed everyone? So they took all the flat rice, all the yogurt, all the milk, all the condensed milk, all the honey, all the sugar, all the mangoes, all the bananas, in all the marketplaces in all directions. For many kilometers, they bought everything. Very quickly also. And then they mixed it. They made two types of pots. One is called Gritasneya, one is Madhusneya. Gritasneya means more greasy love, like ghee. And Madhusneya means more sweet, like honey. So in one pot, they mixed this flat rice with honey, with different kinds of fruits, with milk, and with one they put in more ghee, also, and one had yogurt, honey like this, and had ghee and condensed milk, but some had different types of bananas and mangoes. So anyhow, they made very sweet preparations like this, and then they distributed all the devotees, first to Nityananda. Nityananda said that he first offered this to Mahaprabhu. And this pastime also shows that, like when we offer to the, the Didi, sometimes ordinary people cannot see that the Didi is actually there taking. But when Nityananda offered it, a few people who were fortunate, who had spiritual vision, they could see that even though Mahapu was in Puri, he appeared there and he was taking prasad. And then him, he and Nityananda together went and took from everyone's pots. So they made everything prasadam and they were putting it in each other's mouths with a very happy spirit. So in this way that pastime happened, so they distributed prasad to everyone. And then afterwards Raghunath gave the rest of the wealth that he had to Shivananda Sen, I believe, or, and they said, please distribute to all the Vaishnavas according to what they need. So after that, it said, Prodi always talks about this when he talks about Panihati. We might not be able to finish his whole life today. We will do it for another five, six minutes. So, um, Prodi likes to say that, he always talks about this when he talks about this pastime, is that Nityananda desired to give this Brajabhav to everyone. Now they're engaged in Sankirtan, but still, until they get prasad from a Mahabha, like a Nitya Siddha, especially from the gopis, then this Brajbhav cannot awaken in the heart. That's why in our bhakti process, prasadam is integral. It is said in the, I think it's the 36th limb of bhakti, is taking Mahaprasadam. In the 64 limbs of bhakti given by Rupa Goswami, it says, one is that you have to take Mahaprasadam. Because until you take Mahaprasad, you don't purify your body and your consciousness. That's why Prudhi himself is, even at this age, every day is cooking. Because it could, you could say, okay, 
Why did Nityananda tell Raghunath to prepare the food? He could have told anyone or he could have said, okay, Raghunath, you know, you give your money and you, or, you know, send someone else to do it. But he told, you yourself have to do it. And he told him, he called him a thief. Why did he call him a thief? He said, now I'll give you danda. I forgot that part. He said, it's called danda mahotsav. So danda means punishment, but it also means like the sannyas danda. Sannyasi always carries a danda and that danda represents God, Narayan. So he wanted to give him, he knew that Raghunath wanted to be renounced from family life. So he gave him a danda, meaning he gave him that permission and chance to be renounced and to leave family life. So that's one meaning of danda mahotsav. And the other thing is that he's saying, oh, you are hiding your true sweetness. You are Rati Manjari. So Nityananda was there with the mood of Baladev and the, he was with all the Sakas, engaged in Sankirtan and when he saw this Manjari come, he thought, oh, the Manjaris, they're always cooking and preparing breakfast and with Radhika. So he had this mood and he also thought, I want everyone to get a chance to taste this Braj Bhav and to enter Braj. To actually get this Braj Rati. Rati means attraction in Braj towards Krishna. I want everyone to get this Braj Rati and you are Rati Manjari. So then therefore he arranged through him. He didn't arrange through anyone else. Why? Because unless someone on that level is cooking and preparing, then the prasad is not on the highest level. You can say anyone can cook and offer it to Krishna. But Krishna showed in his own pastime, Duryodhan Meva Tyaga Sag Vidurgarkai. Duryodhan arranged a huge opulent feast and tried to get Krishna to eat, but Krishna wouldn't take it. And then instead he went to the house of Vidura and Vidura's wife saw Krishna and she had so much love and, but see they were very poor so they had nothing to feed Krishna so she had a few bananas in the house and she started peeling the bananas but she was so absorbed in love that she gave the peels to Krishna and threw the bananas in the rubbish bin <laughs> and Krishna was eating the banana peels with great love and affection and Vidura came home and said oh Krishna you're eating banana peels and he told his wife why are you feeding him the banana peels and she said oh <laughs> but Krishna was eating them one after another one after another one after another one banana like 10-15 banana peels <laughs> Why? Because she had love. So if someone has love and they offer with love, then whatever they offer is very sweet. But ultimately, the manjaris and gopis, they're not offering banana peels. If they use banana peels, then they'll cut them up and make pakoras. <laughs> Sometimes Ruji makes banana peels pakoras and they're full of protein and, pro and very healthy also. So anyhow, um, we see like Prabhuji is cooking. Why? Because if Prabhuji is cooking, if real Vaishnava is, like pure Vaishnava is cooking and offering to Takaji, then that prasad becomes infinitely more powerful than what an ordinary person would cook. And through that prasad they give this braj rati. And then when you take the prasad and also follow the bhakti process by doing kirtan, hearing harigata, you know, following, going on parikrama, following navada bhakti in the dham, then it's like your bhakti process is complete. So after this time then the Lord began to arrange such things in such a way that Raghunath would soon be able to come to Mahaprabhu. So I think we can stop here. Okay? And tomorrow we'll continue Raghunath's story. And then we'll, st after, I think tomorrow we'll be able to finish the story of his basic life pastimes. And then we'll go into the first verse. And we'll memorize the first verse also. Okay? Once you cover through the Kripa Sindhuya Bisa, Prita Anang Pabhanebhyo, Vaishnavibhyo, Namo Namaha. This is a good 30 minutes. 30 minutes enough.